perfect beer. What a concept. While the basic ingredients of beer haven't changed much since ancient Egyptian times, most modern beers go through seven essential process sites. The mill, the mash mixer, the lauder ton, the brew kettle, the fermenter, the aging tank, and the finishing tank. Steam Whistle has three teams of brewers working eight-hour shifts. Head brewer Jeff and brewer Elizabeth call themselves the hose draggers because they make sure the beer never stops flowing. And they help Merrick keep tabs on each batch of beer at every step of the process. Most beer is made from malted barley. Malted barley? What's that about? The barley kernels are usually soaked in water for three days so they'll germinate, which is then halted by dry roasting. At that very specific point, the barley has just the right amount of moisture and the right amount of protein, and must be no smaller than two and a half millimeters. Pretty particular requirements. Only very large breweries malt their own barley. Most receive it already malted. Milling the malt is the first step in the brewing process. In the mill, the malted barley grains are cracked. Cracking the outer shell of the malt helps release the starch from inside the grain. Jeff Pearson will make sure the cracked malt is mixed properly in the next step. The mash mixer. This is where you introduce the dry grain to the very wet water. And what happens is it, it goes in and it forms what uh, looks like a porridge. Hot water reactivates the natural enzymes in the cracked malt, forcing the starch to convert into sugars, which dissolve into the water. The brew then goes to the third step, the lauder tun. In the lauder tun, which is similar to a colander, the mash is strained and a clear sugary liquid called wort drips into the bottom of the tank. During this stage, the brewer adjusts the strength of the mash. He calls it sparging. Essentially what we're doing is just diluting. So what, what it'd be like is like, say you use twice as much coffee in your coffee maker to make coffee. And, uh, and then you're adding water to it to dilute it down so it's like drinkable. The next step in the process is the brew kettle, which is similar to a pressure cooker. Here, the wort is carefully brought to a steaming boil. And at the exact moment the recipe requires, the brewmaster adds flavor-giving hops, sometimes at different stages. Compressed into pellets, hops don't look like much, but they're the stars of the beer recipe. Hops are just like spice. They're like the spice of the beer. After boiling, the brew is cooled and moved to the fermenter tank, where the alcohol will be produced. Here, yeast is introduced to the cooled wort. By now, the wort is about 10% sugar. The yeast literally eats the wort's sugars, and as it does, it produces alcohol and carbon dioxide. The yeast is the little organism, the little Pac-Man that goes in there and it eats all the sugar, and it burps out the carbon dioxide, and it creates the alcohol that makes a delicious beer. <laughs> 